Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we tackle a single relevant question based on our Bible reading for that day. This week we're in the book of 1 John, and today I'm joined by Chris Rexford and Jay Rivenbart. We're going to look at a question from 1 John. Since it's Monday, let's talk about the theme just briefly. The theme of 1 John is fellowship with God. And um, this is written by the Apostle John. Uh, and, and the only reason why you distinguish the Apostle John is you want to distinguish him from John the Baptist. Uh, so this is the Apostle John. And the theme is fellowship with God, where he defines as what he, he defines fellowship with God as walking in the light and having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He emphasizes the importance of knowing God, abiding in him. He warns against false teachers, which was a theme in many of these uh, epistles that we find at the end of the New Testament. And um, he just didn't want believers to be led astray. And he explains how uh, believers can ensure their fellowship with God by confessing their sins, obeying his commands, loving one another, and rejecting the world's ways. He also talks about testing the spirits to discern whether they're from God or the devil. And we'll touch on that one day this week. And so um, our reading today was chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. And he says, My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, he has an advocate with the Father who pleads our case. He has an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of the world. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. So the question I want to ask today is, how is obedience and salvation tied together? Because he specifically says, if you are saved or if you have been forgiven, you can be sure that you know him if you keep his commandments. If you don't keep his commandments and claim you know God, you're a liar not living in the truth. Um, it, it, is he talking about salvation? I guess that's the first question that we probably have to decide. But how are obedience and salvation tied together? Well, it's definitely a, a form of evidence of your trans, transformation or the process of being transformed. But it's also evidence of, of you submitting to God's will and not following your own ways or what people around you are doing. Yeah, it's, the reality is salvation um, is about sacrifice and self-surrender. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, the lordship of Jesus Christ and how we live and respond, whether we choose to be obedient or not, is demonstration of that relationship. Um, I don't think there's any way around that. What kind of commandments then become the ones that define our relationship with Christ? Which, which ones? What ones? Well, definitely repentance. Um, and as Jay was just saying there, self -sacri I mean, sacrifice, sacrificing your wants and desires and shifting them over to what Christ is wanting um, from you and through you. And then it's also an example to other believers as, as they're beginning their journey of following Jesus. If you're setting the right example by doing what you're supposed to be doing, they'll be able to follow that. And if you don't, you could actually send them down the wrong path. To answer your question, I think the answer is all of them. All, all, all of truth that we know as we learn it, yeah. there's responsibility attached to it. Just the ones Jesus talked about or the ones in in Scripture totality? I think in its totality because everything, you know, as we've done this one single story ultimately points to Jesus, and, and you can't separate them out. Um, later on, there will be another day we will talk uh, in another chapter where he says it is a growth process, though. Um, I think the answer is we want to be obedient and follow him in all the commandments, instructions of, of Scripture that are laid out. But that is a process. You know, we don't get there all at one time. 
frankly, for you to live right, it could include some things, and not just you, but you, mm-hmm. me, Chris, anybody, could include some things that aren't in Scripture. 100%. Do you have a personal example? Well, there are some things that, that I wouldn't be comfortable with um, that I don't even think you could find a scriptural basis to say this is sin and, and define it. But for me on a personal level, it, it would make me uncomfortable. It would violate my conscience. And Scripture is pretty clear about that in, mm-hmm. in, in some places. Um, to him that knows do good and doeth not it sin um, if, if we sin against our conscience. And so many of the things are laid out very clearly in Scripture, commandments, but some, some are not. Some right. are, I would say, more personal, which is what you're asking. Yeah. Do you think that is because you are more mature spiritually um, or do you think it, it has more to do with personal proclivities that protect God is wants from you to protect you? The answer is, is yes to, to the latter that something that may, may be an issue for me that I feel like I need to obey or surrender in this particular area that may not be clearly defined as a law or commandment or rule or regulation, um, may be a boundary that is necessary for me mm-hmm. to keep me safe. From, just for you. That's right, just for me. And and so therefore what I have to be careful about, if that is the case, and it may be a more personal issue, that I don't project that out to you or to you or to we become Someone legalistic. Yeah. yeah, that's that's Absolutely. when we become yeah. legalistic. Yeah, I, I I would agree with that. Chris, do you have any like insight on like personal? I, I would call them personal convictions. Yeah, I would say that some of the personal convictions can come under some of the general um, words of caution. Um, some of them even commands. But when you look back at the book of Ecclesiastes, he talks about a whole variety of things, and some of them are somewhat general, but they all conclude with basically a chasing after the wind. You're spending all of your time and you're chasing after these things that are not good. Um, so a lot of times I'll reflect on those that, you know, maybe it's not a direct commandment, but I'm asking myself, is this taking me in a good direction? Am I honoring God with my time in this? Am I wasting my time in this? Am I causing other people to do that as well? Yeah, I would agree. You know, I growing up, there were things. So I, I was recently in a circle of people who, were they, the, one of the couples was slightly older, and the woman had come from a very similar background to me. And um, something came up about wedding rings. Mm. Did your parents wear red, wedding rings? Mm-hmm. They did. Mm-hmm. My parents did not, do not. The, originally, the church I grew up in did not allow it. Later, it allowed it. But still taught against wearing rings of any other kind other than a wedding band. Um, And so to this day, even though that teaching of the church has been passed long 40 years, Mm -hmm. my parents still don't, you know. Um, My mom, to my knowledge, since she got saved, never cut her hair. Mm -hmm. Now, that that commandment is not in scripture mm-hmm. not to cut your hair now it does say a, a woman's hair is her glory yep. and women should have long hair men should have short hair and that i don't even know what that means <laughs> you know um really i don't yeah i, I don't i don't know what that means god yeah. knew we wouldn't take care of him we'd just be a mess yeah, I, I don't know what it means <laughs> but it, 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 but you also go to samson who had a self-imposed that that expectation was not imposed on anybody else, in, in any other people but him and um the other um i can't even think um the vow he made the nazarite, oh, nazarite, nazarite. vow mm-hmm. I, I was thinking ninevite and i was like yeah. no ninevite ain't it I, I know it starts with the n and it ain't coming to me yeah so um the nazarite vow Mm-hmm. But it what that wasn't something that was placed on everybody else. That was right. a, that was a a, a relationship commitment. You know, mm-hmm. it was, you know, they, his was lifelong. And I think when people encounter that Nazarite vow and other times in Scripture, or, or it was now, temporary. It's temporary. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. It was temporary. And so, um, I do think sometimes there are things that we avoid because we are more spiritually mature. 
That's that's true. There are other things I think God individually convicts us of because they we have to stay so far away from X that any involvement mm -hmm. would be detrimental, you know, to us. Um, so I, I think that it, it, it cuts both ways. The, the question, though, that, I, I, that I've thought about since I've been sitting here, it says, but those who obey God's word truly show they completely love him. But those who say they live in God should. Wait a second. OK, he says the person who claims I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments. That person is a liar and not living in the truth. OK, so the question I have is, are they not saved? Or are they just backslidden? I think the answer could be either, mm -hmm. okay. depending on the level yeah. of the individual, de depending on the level of uh, disobedience, the, the length of it, the intentionality. I, I think there's a lot of factors, but I think it could it could be any of the uh, aforementioned ones there. Yeah, I mean, I was going through a study by J.D. Greer on Romans, and he kept talking about the problem with... Uh, religiosity with people and how they would do all these things thinking that they were saved and it kind of come from their culture as well so i sit there and think about people that they have adopted religion instead of actually following god and having that relationship with him so i could easily see somebody like that saying i know god but then still going and living their life however they want because they think they can make it up in all these other different types of acts or whatever their church is calling them to do well, the flip side of that is almost as dangerous where people say, here's here's a set of rules laid out. I follow them. Therefore, I am in mm -hmm. relationship. That's and, right. And, and so I think it can it can go in either direction. Yeah, it's hard for me to tell. It All it says is they're not walking in the truth. I, I, I shouldn't find comfort in either of these. But the people who concern me the most are people who, I would say it like this, know better. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if you're not saved, never been saved, and you're, you're, you're even, and you're lying about I am saved, you know, but you've never made a profession mm -hmm. of faith, never walked any kind of truth, that's one issue. But when you have made a profession of faith, walked in the light, and then now are completely ignoring God's commandments. Some real spiritual dangers there. Mm -hmm. And um, I have real concerns about those people. They're held to a higher standard. Some people would, if you were, if I had the same situation and people come into church, and we've had this before, where, where one was not saved and one was saved, we dealt with them differently. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because one knows better. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you deal with people who know better differently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Have to. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us tomorrow as we continue our conversation around First John. Mm -hmm.